Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install, it's very simple, don't worry, a wideband air fuel gauge from AEM. We're gonna install this into my 1964 Comet, but you can apply this to any vehicle, new or old, and this is gonna allow you to tune your engine using the wideband air fuel ratio that we receive from the sensor. So let's go ahead and get started. If you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, please look at my first two videos. I'm doing this as part of a series to show you guys how to properly tune a carburetor. In the first video, we went ahead and installed an Edelbrock ABS-2 onto this old small block Ford. Very simple stuff. In the second video, I showed you the importance of setting your fuel pressure, what it should be, how to set it. All those things, very important for an Edelbrock, by the way. Um, Onto, onto this vehicle. And then also in that video, I showed you how to tune the idle air mixture circuit using uh, a vacuum gauge. Now that we've got that all out of the way, we can really dive into the proper tuning. And there are a few ways to do this. The first would be to read spark plugs. The second would be to get a wideband. So I'm gonna show you how to do it the wideband way. So let's go ahead and unbox this AEM. So opening up the box, um, this is what it comes with. Obviously you get the gauge itself, um, very basic. There are two electrical connections on the back, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, you get a wideband gauge. Be careful, obviously I like to leave this cap on. You really don't wanna to be touching this, getting oils from your hands or other contaminants on it. You wanna leave this covered up until you're ready to install. So that's your gauge. You've got the wiring right here. This is actually gonna be your power wiring. I know you're seeing a ton of wires here, but don't worry, you only need to use two of those. The rest are optional. So for most people, you're just gonna be using um, a 12 volt source and also a, a ground. Very simple. If you can wire an electric choke, you can wire one of these up. This is all plug and play as well. So this hooks up to your sensor and this side runs into the back of the gauge. So again, plug and play, you've got a pin there, you've got a pin there, and these go into the back. Um, you also, very important, you get the weld in bone, you'll have to weld this in. They have other styles. I don't know if AEM makes them, they have some that are clamp on, but just go ahead and get this welded in. Um, it's threaded. You could have an exhaust shop do it if you'd like, and you can either thread in a bung while you drive it home, or just put the gauge in and just wrap the wires out of the way. But you will need to, um, to weld that in, not too hard. Um, we'll talk about that more in a second. And then obviously you have the instructions. So I'm not gonna read through all this. You guys can when you buy it, but I will say two things that you gotta uh, be aware of when installing this. Okay, the two things that you have to be aware of when you're installing a wideband. First is placement. Um, it's too close to the engine, especially on a turbocharged application you're gonna burn this thing up. So what they say is if this is just a general use, it's a street car, non-turbocharged, not, not something you're racing, just you know, something, your, your average daily driver, most applications, minimum 18 inches away. Um, if this is a race car, it's running at high RPM, you're running different types of fuels, you wanna step it back further. I believe they say 36 inches. So just read the instructions on placement of this, just so you don't put it too close or too far. The other thing is, you know when you start up your car and you see some condensation coming out of the tailpipe when it's cold? Um, that will mess with the sensor. So what they say is you want to install this 10 degrees above horizontal. So think of it like this. If you've got fluid, you know, a little bit of condensation coming through the exhaust, you don't want this to be on the bottom where all that's collecting because uh, that'll mess up your sensor. It'll shorten the light, can give you bad reading. So just make sure when you install this, when you drill your hole that you just angle it up a little bit and then you'll be totally fine. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that this is the best welding I've ever done, but um, when you don't have a lift, it's, uh, it's kind of tough to do on your back, but we got it, no leaks, that's the big thing. The one thing I don't absolutely love about how I mounted it, <laughs> and I realized this after I drilled the hole, is ground clearance. Um, I don't think it's the lowest thing on the car, but it's definitely kind of down there, so it's just something I'll have to be weary of. Ideally, I would have put it off at a different angle, but there wasn't a ton of room. Also. Um, if you ever make in your exhaust from scratch, go ahead and <laughs> make it so you can remove it. So this thing is welded like all the way back, um, which means most likely I would have been able to undo it from up there, but that's it. If I could have undone it, I probably would have put it somewhere else that I couldn't have welded on the car, but would have tucked the sensor up further. Um, but this is kind of what I could do with the access that I had. So, uh, we'll want to go ahead and tuck this wire away. So it's out of the way. You want to keep that away from any heat sources. Um, but it's in there, it's nice and tight. So for mounting the gauge, 
I had had this old leftover kind of gauge pod mount. It's not for these gauges, it's for uh, a pro sport gauge. If you want to see the installation of these gauges, it's a different video on my channel. You can check that out. But um, I opened up the back a little bit. It's not super pretty, but it will let me get these in there. Now, this, this type of gauge generally uses, uh, let's see where I put it. Um, I can't find it. Oh, here it is. There's a piece normally, this goes over the back, and then you have two little wing nuts that kind of screw on here and hold it in place. What I did was I got some, um, I got some foam with some, that's got some sticky stuff on one side. I cut it real thin and I put it around here. And it's actually gonna allow me to press that into here. And it's a pretty good interference fit, but it'll also allow me to pop this out if I ever need to get back in there. So I'm gonna try that out. If it falls out while I'm driving, um, we'll reevaluate it. You could always like glue it, but then you can't really get it out. So we're just gonna try this. I'm really trying to minimize the amount of holes I drill into this car. So um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and try that and we'll see how it works. Interior gauge placement is pretty much up to you. I decided to run mine here. Um, just right below the headlight switch. I'm sorry, the lighter on the dash, just so I can easily see it when I'm driving, but it's not so blatantly obvious. I didn't want to mount it up here on the dash. Or it's actually just using 3M tape to hold it on right now. And we'll see how it stays. If it stays well, great. If not, I'll come up with something else, but I really want to avoid drilling a bunch of holes in this thing if I can. Um, that's just more potential leak points. And then I use an existing hole that was coming out of the firewall here, ran it along this hard line and you won't even see the wires when I'm done. Um, I went ahead and ground off a little spot on the firewall for my ground right there and uh, tied into the switch 12 volt, which I also use for my uh, electric choke. So I tested it, it's good. I just got it plugged in obviously over the fender right now. I'll go ahead and hide those wires. The one thing I'll say, good or bad, AEM gives you a ton of extra wire so I'm gonna have to wind up coiling it up. Um, again, and this is all because if I go to a set of long tubes, I could move things back and I could need the extra wire. But if this is gonna be a permanent installation for you guys, I would recommend shortening up the harness because it is super long. It's, it's as if, I don't know, you've got a big truck or something, you gotta mount everything real far down. But um, yeah, so let's go ahead and finish up and get started. So I've got everything installed. You really can't see the wires unless you look. I even hid the super long uh, loom underneath the uh, kind of strut tower brace here. But if you look down in here, you will be able to see, well, maybe. Um, I use some clips to try and hold it out of the way. You do want to make sure that you don't get any of that wiring near your exhaust because if you burn up the cable, you have to buy potentially a new sensor or just a new cable, which is a pain. So just be careful on your routing. All right, at this point, you wanna go ahead and turn the car on. Um, you wanna have, obviously have it hooked to a 12 volt switch source. You don't want it on all the time. You want it on when the key's on or when the engine's running. So you'll fire it up. Uh, it needs to heat up, so you'll see heat. It'll take a few seconds for it to cycle through and start reading. Again, don't be surprised when you first fire it up if it's running really rich, especially if it's cold, that's pretty normal. Um, your engine will like to run rich. Then once you get it all kind of fired up, go out and drive it and start looking. And, and I'll, I'll have a whole nother video where we'll talk about how to tune the different circuits. I've actually already started that, um, but I'm gonna separate that into another video. I don't wanna give too much information in this one. So now that you have it installed, you can go out and start driving it. Sometimes it helps to have somebody with you um, just so you know they can watch the gauge as you do different things. Um, it's really not that hard, especially with the Edelbrock. There's a lot of things you can do without even removing parts off the carburetor. You can make step up springs and rod changes um, in like five minutes. And Jet's a little more involved, but not, not too bad. So I really appreciate you guys watching this video and I hope you like the content. Um, and on the next one, we will go very deep into the detail of tuning, which I think is what a lot of y'all are interested in. So let's fire it up. We'll wrap up this video and I will see you guys next time.